Hi guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing okay. I've been in bed for, I don't know, two or three days. Just wasn't feeling great. And uh, I think my lack of sleep was starting to catch up to me. But I could not wait to get back to, uh, I did get the journal shipped out. Sorry about the delay. I know I say that all the time, but you guys know they get to you eventually. Um, so I've been working on pockets and envelopes and trying to use this gigantic stash of book pages. So I thought I would just sort of make a, I don't know how long the video is going to be, but I thought I would just show you some of the things that I'm doing with book pages to make them into envelopes to use in the 500 Reader's Digest journals that I'm working on. So uh, first thing is just a very simple, almost like a coin envelope type of thing. And uh, I've seen these, these little envelopes like this in like boxes of old ephemera. A lot of times they would take some kind of identification card or something like that and just slip it into a little manila envelope like this. Um, it's open on the bottom, so I'm just going to stitch across the bottom. And then this can just get paper clipped into, um, into a journal. So really it's just, um, it's basically just a book page, uh, fold over, you know, however, however wide you want this to be, fold like that. Um, you just want to give yourself a little bit of a, um, something to glue the other side to, you know what I mean? Um, it's just so, 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 so simple. Like explaining it is like really hard. Um, <laughs> anyway, so it's just folded over like that. This, these, I actually made sure that, um, why don't I have a book page? How come I don't even have a book page that I can do this with right now? I am so not organized today. Let's see. Here we go. Dictionary. Okay, so this is how wide I want my envelope to be, right? So then I just take this other one, fold it over like that. And then I know where my crease is. This paper is a little bit too thin, so. Um, but I like to leave that torn edge on the top, um, just just because I think it, I think it uh, that little bit of rusticness is nice. So, anyways, just apply some glue onto that short side, and then uh, fold this down. Um, I do like to take something and sort of open that up and set it up to dry just to make sure that I don't glue it shut, you know, and then just run a little bit of glue, you know, either inside there. Uh, I've seen people take it and just sort of fold it up. You know, you can run a stitch across that or whatever, you know, it's just a way to use up some book pages and make some little tiny easy pockets that you can put journaling cards and stuff like that in you know, um, add a little tab on the top, um, makes it, makes it easy. Okay. So that's just one little, little, little tiny, easy envelope. Um, and then you could make an actual little envelope just like that. I like to fold over the, like, uh, one of the edges where I feel like it's going to get more wear and tear. I like to double up the paper. Um, and then what I intend to do is to just glue this onto another piece of book paper just to make it like a little, um, like a little journaling card, you know, 
So I'm just going to glue this down. I still have, I still would fold that over, glue it down. And then people have asked me if this uh, glue stick actually like sticks and doesn't, um, doesn't come up. And the answer is no, it doesn't come up. And yes, it, it sticks. Uh, I wouldn't be using it if it didn't. I've never had it over time suddenly come apart. Um, but that's what, <clears throat> but I have had that happen using uh, school glue. Uh, and especially repositionable school glue. Don't want to use repositionable school glue, guys. Uh, there's no point in using glue that's repositionable, right? Well, I guess it does have a point, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so just to make that a little, um, a little journaling card that you could write on. Um, if you want to make sure that your uh, text is right side up, on your envelopes, um, turn it upside down before you fold up the bottom and then the top and the, the flap and the bot the base of the envelope will be, will be readable. Um, so anyway, you could leave this just like that, put a paper clip on it, stick it into a pocket or whatever. And you just have a cute little, little envelope. Um, I would maybe stitch around the edges or something, maybe around the corners, um, maybe add a little label on here. Just extremely simple, very, very basic. Um, and then to sort of kick it up a notch, I guess you would say, um, you could take a little tab. This is sort of what I've been doing. Take a little tab like that and glue it right in the center of the flap, perfectly centered. perfectly centered and then what I've been doing is just add a a little eyelet in there on that tab first I would stitch around this like right around the border with the sewing machine and probably around these corners. I'm hesitant to do this stuff because this glue is still wet, but you guys get the idea. So easy. And then add a little eyelet. On this tab. Okay, and then just get like some, some kind of um, like heavy cotton thread, something like that. This is button thread, button and carpet thread. Cut a length of that. You want to make sure it's at least, um, you know, long enough to wrap around that a couple times. Okay, and then I take it and kind of fold it in half, give, give myself like about two inches on the short side.
Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Sorry. <laughs> I'm spacing out. Put it through the eyelet first. And then leave yourself about a two inch tail and just tie this in a like an overhand knot, I guess you call it. I don't know. Kind of right up to the eyelet. It's, it's a little easier to, if you use a like an awl when you're tying your knot. Put your put your awl in the circle of the knot before you tighten it up, and then you can slide it right up to the right slide it right up to the eyelet with the using the eyelet, and then pull the I pull the awl out and tighten your knot. <clears throat> anyway, so you know you could just leave it leave it like that even. Just with some string, you know, tied around it, put a paper clip on. Or um, use a button. Uh, Carla showed us how to do this on a video. And she had seen somebody do it. Um, I don't remember who it was. But she used a button. Whoops, let me use this little guy. I like to use a button with two holes for this. Just thread your string up from the back of the button and then through the front, right? So it goes through both holes, okay? And then you can always move this. I suppose you could glue this in place if you wanted to. You could just add a little dab of glue uh, right there on that on that string just to hold it right there, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. And then you can just wrap this string around and just kind of hook it onto the button. And that gives you just a cute little envelope that's all closed up. Um, I had this big roll of elastic. This is one millimeter elastic cord and it's too thin for me really I think to use for journals um, just because I don't think it's that sturdy. But um, I thought well I could probably use it on these envelopes. So let me show you what I decided to do. Let's take, I guess I could just use another one of these. Hold on, hold the phone. Yeah, just take another one of these little guys. Obviously you could make any of these like larger than this. And I've got this whole stack of just book pages that are blank on one side. And that's what I'm using to back these. Um, okay, so let's see which way it's going to fit. So it'll fit that way. Um, I keep making the mistake of gluing my book page onto this side. And, and then I have, have that. And I have to, like, double check myself all the time. Okay, so I'm just going to glue this onto here. And again, I've folded that edge over because I just like to add a little bit of extra strength on that side. Because that's going to be where the envelope is open. To save myself cutting, I'm going to push this right up to two edges. Um, if you plan on using blank book pages like this, like I'm doing, um, you want to check them to make sure that they don't, uh, make sure they don't crack when you fold them. Kind of defeats the purpose. You want it to be relatively sturdy paper. Okay. So there's another envelope. Let's grab another tab. 
use a little bit bigger one this time. Don't have to use a tab. Actually, let's not use a tab. Let's just use an eyelet. You know what, though? I think I am going to... I'm going to glue just a little piece of folded paper onto the edge of this flap. Just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Right in the center there. Could do this with just like a circle punch too or any other shape um, paper punch that you have. Or a tab. <laughs> okay. So I like that. And then... paper is this the glue is wet so it's not it's not working perfect hold on okay okay so now I've got uh, just a little reinforcer and an eyelet and then I want to find a button that's got four holes got four holes and I want to make sure that I can that this elastic will go through the holes which it will so then let me take this hold on let me see if this is gonna work yeah so you want to make it you want to take it give yourself like an extra inch Hold it down on the eyelet and then wrap it around twice. I think. Hold on. Let me make sure. This is my plan. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say... And give yourself about an extra maybe two inches wrap it loosely around so it, so it comes back up again so it was two and a half times okay I know the, <laughs> I should have this stuff all worked out right okay and then what did I do hold on I did one of these already Just let me remind myself what I did Okay, so then I'm going to put this through the bottom hole. Well, I guess it's whatever hole you decide is going to be the bottom. And then, and then insert the other end of the elastic through, through the one that's right next to it. Okay. And then, and then you want to thread your elastic back up through the other holes. Try to keep your elastic even. Okay, so just like that. So the elastic goes through both sets of holes like that. Okay, and then just, you know, you do want to make sure that your elastic is pretty even so try to keep those try to keep those even can you guys hear the the cat feeder it has a little, has this thing so you can record yourself talking to your cat it's a little automated feeder anyway and then take the little loop through the eyelet and then feed that button up through that loop kind of snug that up and then pull your button up 
pull your button up almost, you know, to the to the uh, edge of the flap, and then wrap this around. And then you want to mark where you're right to the bottom of your button. Hold on to that, and then tie this into a knot. What I mean about using the the awl is you stick the awl into the center of your knot and then then you can move your knot whichever way you want okay so if you keep the awl into your in your knot right there then you can kind of then you can move your knot whichever way you need to you know um, just makes it so that it stays loose just loose enough okay so then you have this piece of elastic that wraps around your envelope. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably lots and lots of ways to do that, but, um, but anyways, that was my little idea for using some of this elastic and using up some of these book pages, you know, so it's like a little packet. I love that kind of stuff. Um, and then I've got tons of, yeah, see, this was the first one that I did. So it's like, um, you don't want your elastic to be too tight. Otherwise your thing is going to go like that. Um, so you do kind of want to make sure that your paper is somewhat stiff, uh, which is another reason why I like to use, you know, two layers of paper on here. Um, and you, and this is a really lightweight elastic, so, so it shouldn't, you know, shouldn't get, do too bad. Um, okay, so then... I've got a good zillion other envelopes that I've been working on. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Okay. So I'm doing these little these envelopes with uh, with windows. And this, I, I'm loving the maps, like the old atlases and the old map pages right now, um, because I've just got a ton of them from different books and stuff. And then also tons and tons of botanical book pages that I've just been sticking into a drawer and, uh, I want to use them, but a lot of them, like from those Sowerby books, are just a single page, and I feel like I don't want to just stick it into a journal as a page in a journal because they're so precious. I don't, like, I want to do them justice. Like, I want to make something kind of special with them, so uh, I'm going to make some envelopes with these. And I've also got tons of other botanical book pages that I've coffee dyed. And so a lot of these I want to make into little, make into little envelopes too. Um, but these larger ones. are also coffee dyed. So, and so the part of the reason that I haven't used these lot, a lot of them is because, well, first of all, I don't feel like fussy cutting all of this, but I like them kind of the way they are. And I don't know, I didn't really want to, they're too big to use just as a regular page in a journal. Any, anyway, I have lots of reasons <laughs> why I do things and why I don't do things. But um, anyway, so I'm making these into envelopes. And um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll just 
I'm just going to fold this up. Oh, it's hard to say <laughs> exactly how far, but about that far, you know, I mean, you can kind of gauge how, you know, so that my flap comes about halfway down. Um, depends on the size of your book page, I guess. Um, whoops, I did that wrong. <laughs> did that wrong. There we go. Like this, because I want my flowers to be right up, the right side up. Okay. So fold that down. And then this one, I'm folding down almost to the top of this part, like about, I would say about a centimeter above it. Okay. And then, um, I made this little template. Now, what kind of inspired me to do this was I was watching Tracy doing some of her little like specimen tags, you know, and, um, she was using a square paper punch to punch out kind of a long rectangular shape on her little tag. Um, and I only have one square paper punch and it's a one and a half inch, but it won't go down into the paper as far as I wanted it to. So I just made myself a little rectangle template. Okay. And I mean, if I had, there's other types of paper punches where, I mean, or you can use a die cut machine or whatever. There's all kinds of ways to do it. But I just, you know, if you don't have a die cut machine, you don't have a whole bunch of paper punches and you don't have the kind where you can put it in the center of a piece of paper like I don't. Um, and you need your punch to be further into the paper, just make a little template. And then I'm going to trace around my template. This is the inside of the pocket. Hopefully this... I'm using this because I want you guys to be able to see it. Um, normally I just use a pencil and then, oh, where did I put my little, there it is. Then I have my little ruler. I still can't find my metal ruler. I don't know what happened to it. I used to have actually a small metal ruler, like about this size. Maybe it's in my coloring stuff. Hmm. So I'm just using a exacto knife to cut this out. Um, I've been crocheting. I made some little, <laughs> I made some little booties for my granddaughter. Uh, with this wool yarn that is not super wash wool yarn. It's like, so you can felt it and I felted them and they're super cute, except for they're way too small now. So I had them measure her foot for me and her foot is four inches. She's, th how old is she? She's three months old and her foot is four inches long already. Anyways, she's gigantic. Okay. So I cut out my um, my shape. So I guess the thing is like, you could use obviously any shape you want, but I kind of wanted to have it sort of like a, um, like a privacy or not a privacy. <laughs> uh, it's like a window, like a window envelope, like, like make my own instead of using a, you know, recycling one and stuff, you know what I'm saying. Okay. And then I, I like to use this Duralar stuff. It, it's not acetate. It's actually, uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but it is clear film, all archival polyester film. So you can use this like for ink and stuff. It, it has a lot of different uses but it's also heat resistant so you can um you can do embossing on it um okay so then i'm just going to cut a piece of this duralar this is 
an inch and a half, oh, you know, wide. Um, and I think it's five inches long. Something like that. Yeah, it's five inches long. So I'm going to cut this piece. Um, so I have an, a one inch over, overhang around my window. So I'm cutting it to two and a half inches by six. And then I have this little piece left over that I can use for a smaller window envelope. So, <laughs> yes, if, you know, obviously I'm not making just one of these. I've done a whole bunch already, but um, if you want to do a whole bunch, I would recommend do all your cutting of all your envelopes and then glue in all your, you know, you could use packaging. You could use, um, even just, um, like clear pages, like, uh, um, you know, like you would use in a binder protect page protectors. You could even use page protectors. Um, I like this stuff because it's stiff too, and it kind of helps, um, sturdy, make, makes this a little bit more sturdy anyway. So, so then what I like to do is then take this part of the envelope and fold it just barely over the top of that acetate or not acetate <laughs> Duralar. Um, so that, so that when you put something in the pocket, it won't snag on the edge of that, right? Like you want, you, you do kind of want to cover that. So, so that things slide in and out easily. Just a thought. I mean, I, I just like to do that kind of stuff because I think it makes, things more user friendly and people don't get annoyed with it that way. Um, and then I'm just going to glue that down and then I'm going to stitch on the sewing machine, um, around this window. Okay. After the glue is dry. <laughs> um, I've done, done a bunch of these up to that point. Um, then the next thing I would do is take some other kind of paper, like, you know, in this case, I used a piece of ledger and cut it to fit in that space. Okay. Um, you could just, you could cover up the whole flap and the back of the envelope on the inside if you want to, but I plan to add something else on the inside of this too. So I don't want it to be too thick. So I just, I just, you know, folded all of these the same size and I cut these all to the right, um, the right shape, the right size. If you don't feel like measuring and cutting that much, just cut your background paper slightly larger than you know you're going to need and then you can just trim it off you know actually i think that's what i did because i hate measuring stuff so anyway so then i like that that gives something pretty behind this window even when there's nothing in the pocket you know um so let me just stitch around this really quick and then i'll show you my other the way I'm going to finish these up. And I, I did, I said something on, I think it was on my last video about, uh, showing you guys cleaning this machine. And there were some people that were interested in that, but I don't think, I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't know. 
I will, I'll try to find, I'll, I'll tell you what, I will, um, I'll try to remember, if I forget, somebody just remind me, but I'll try to remember to put a link in the description of this video, um, to a couple of channels that I like to watch of people just like doing maintenance on their sewing machines and stuff, especially vintage machines. There's a couple of them. One of them, his name is Andy Tube. And then there's another one that's Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, I think it's called. Okay. So just, what? I don't know what that was. Um, just did a little, you know, a bit of stitching around the window. Um, and then I picked up these, I figure I might as well just, I might as well just show you guys everything I'm doing here. Um, <clears throat> I picked up these little book plates on Amazon and I will show you these. I will put the link in the description. Obviously I'm showing them to you. I must be out of it a little bit still. Anyway, so these are just kind of smaller, um, real thin metal, uh, book, book plates. And what I've done is just a really simple collage. Where is that collage? Here it is. So I just took, you know, one of the pieces of scrapbook paper that I made where I just did like the big pieces of paper on there. And then I just started adding smaller pieces, like little stamps and little bits of, you know, torn paper and, um, you know, tore up some ephemera, did some stenciling and some stamping all over it, just kind of all over it. So I wasn't trying to make this uh, some kind of beautiful composition. I was trying to give myself very small background uh, pattern so that I could do these little book plates. Okay. So, so then I took this collage like this and then I cut it into pieces that fit right behind this little book plate. Okay. And then I just glued one of those little Tim Holtz like words on there, you know, or, you know, you could find words in, um, you know, book pages, <laughs> um, or you can type them out on the computer and print them out in all kinds of different fonts and sizes and stuff like that and cut them up and use them. I mean, I have a gazillion words. I uh, used to, when I did a lot of art tiles, I use those a lot, but anyway, so then I just did like a little word on there. Okay. And then <clears throat> using, and I'll put a link in the description to these little book plates. Uh, there's, there was some larger ones too, and they're not super expensive. So, you know, anyway, um, so then I'm just going to glue this. So this is on, this one was actually done on a piece of like file folder. So it's a little bit thicker. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Just going to glue this on somewhere around there. And then where's my oh great I lost them there they are use these little my all oh, okay take my little book plate and when I cut this when I measured it whoops <laughs> you want to measure the the flat area okay you you don't want to measure where it starts to kind of go up like you don't want to count that in your measurement when you're cutting your little background piece um, because you want it to fit down you want this to lay flush like you want these edges to lay flush against your paper so um, so only measure the size of the frame not this outside border I hope that makes sense. 
Um, okay, so then I'm just going to place this on here where I want it. And then use my awl. actually like to lay it down to do this. And then I use the butt end of my awl to flatten that down. Okay. So then do 10,000 of those. <laughs> Um, and then I want to add something on the back of this just to kind of make that a little bit more sturdy. I'm going to use hold on, hold the phone. Where did it go? Anyway, okay. See, this isn't, oh, well, that'll work. Um, so I'm going to glue this down. This is just the little, the little edge. Because I like the, I don't fold that down until after I've done this part. Because I like the, the edge of the flap to come just above that window. You know, so I wait to fold that over until I've done this part. Okay, so now I'm going to do, I want to cover this up and I also want to make this a little bit sturdier. I know this seems like a lot, doesn't it? Now that I'm, now that I'm showing you guys this, it seems like a ton of work, but I don't know. I just. I like the way they turn out, so. Okay, and then I'm just going to line this up right along that crease. on the wrong side this is why I didn't cover this part when I did when I covered this part like because I I knew I was gonna do this book plate here so <clears throat> and I mean I guess you could wait until after you put the book plate on to actually then you could just do one piece of paper along that whole, that whole thing. But I kind of like the contrast. Like I like having a different type of paper there. So anyway, that's just me. So then there we go. And it's just, I don't know. I just think it, I just think it's pretty. Um, and then you could use any of those other types of closures, you know, like you could add a little tab and do a little button. Oh, oh wait, that doesn't have a tab. Um, do a little tab with a button and a piece of elastic or a piece of carpet thread or something like that. Um, or, you know, you could just tie a piece of, uh, just tie a piece of um, seam binding around it. Um, I actually stitched around, um, to stitch up my envelope. Let me show you. So I rounded the corners. This one, I just did a large square, uh, window. Um, so then I just opened this up. And I stitched up along here like that. And that closed the envelope 
and then um and i just feel like it makes it more sturdy you know when you've got that extra layer of paper kind of all over you know anyway so this could get embellished even more i suppose you know you could add a little label or you know do some other collaging or or stuff like that this is a different book plate these are the paper ones that i have where i've cut them on my scanning cut out of like a heavier um like card stock and then i paint them and stuff but um anyway and or you know a magnet a magnetic closure would be great or on these i did a bunch with the map pages with the atlas pages and then i just added a piece of that and i didn't do stitching around the the flap on these um because i used that that washi tape that i made with the postage stamps um and i didn't want to stitch through that tape with my sewing machine so I didn't know I was gonna do that when I actually did it and then I was like oh crap I shouldn't have put that tape on there before I did the stitching so I should have I should have done my stitching all the way around the whole flap and then put that tape on but it is what it is so there's no stitching on the flaps on these um, but this was kind of a cool way to use up some atlas pages that were just like single pages <clears throat> and then my intention is to because I wanted to make something to use to put some of these postcards in some of these old French postcards so I'm going to just uh, take take one of these and put one in each envelope and I think I'll put a little tab on each one and maybe do just a very quick row of stitching around the edges maybe i'll add a little piece of you know old fabric or something on there too i don't know depends on how inspired i am when it comes to that um and then i've just got all kinds of other little little goodies that i want to tuck into these pockets and i just think it'll be really pretty um with one of those postcards in the pocket hold on I know that the one that I did already is kind of cool, but I don't know where it is at the moment. Anyway, so one of these little postcards in there. And I think it looks neat. So, especially in the, the Atlas page. So, anyway. Okay, guys. I think that's about it on envelopes. And pockets is <laughs> okay um i know that somebody is gonna say that they want me to do this uh kind of show you how i did this i know somebody will but um i have kind of done this before but if you would like to see that just let me know and i'll put it on my list of videos and then um we still need to do some fabric clusters too. I intend to do that. I just kind of haven't gotten around to it yet. And if there's anything else, if, if anybody would care to hear my political stand um, or opinions, let me know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just like to say that because sometimes people get mad if you do that. Anyway. Okay, guys. That's it. Okay. Wish me luck. All right. Love you. <laughs> Bye for now. Thanks for watching.